What's up? My name is Skiz. Um, sorry about that. Um, I basically, I do analysis and review of basically, I mean, mostly in the LCS games. I sometimes look at LCK games. But um, I pretty much mostly been following Team Liquid and Cloud9. Uh, because I, I think that those are pretty much the only two teams at the moment that could actually, not even, to be honest with you, it's really Cloud9, I think, is, is the team that could really, um, you know, be a, be a match. Not even a match. No, I, I, I go as far as to say that they, they could do well at Worlds. And I think at the moment, um, there's a lot of exposure uh, and vulnerabilities in Team Liquid, which is really interesting to me. Uh, because for, for them to be in first place, I think that mostly has to do with uh, a few different other variables. I think that they're probably better players than every other team. Um, with the exception of Cloud9 and maybe FlyQuest, they probably have better synergy. So they're probably about, they're probably about third in terms of synergy between their players. Um, in my opinion, I think that I definitely think that Cloud9 and FlyQuest have team are teams that have better synergy than uh, pretty much everyone else in the league. Um, I do think that um, Team Liquid having better, you know, like really substantially better players than most of the players in the league, I feel like that compensates for their lack of uh, diversity in terms of their draft and. Their, um, I don't like their gameplay. Uh, you have players like Double Lift, Core JJ, Jensen, uh, X Smithy, um, who are pretty much all either really ex like exclusively mechanically good, mechanically and mechanically better than most, or they're just extremely smart. And you have a player like Impact, who's just you know, as we all know, he's a really solid, solid player. Which you need something like that. You need someone who's gonna be a role player who's gonna be very good. Um, at what they do, you know, and I think that's what that's the core of what Team Liquid has. And in any case, I'm kind of rambling at this point. Um, this is week five, day one of the NALCS, and it's Team Liquid versus Echo Fox. Uh, just probably like three or four hours ago, did um, an analysis of um, Team Liquid versus TSM and basically explaining like. Why TSM, why TSM won and how they won. And I'll pretty much be doing the same thing in this game, but explaining why, not only why and how Team Liquid won, but how easily Echo Fox could have won if they knew what they were looking for. Um, and this is, again, this is all my opinion. Like this, this is not to say that any of this is necessarily fact. Um, I'm sure that plenty of people have differing opinions. I'm just kind of putting my thoughts out there. And um, I pretty much always view my games at 1.5 speed because there's no point in viewing it, viewing it at, any other speed, in, at any other speed other than that because it'll like, basically take too long. Um, so I'm going to pretty much begin the video. All right, Team Liquid rather 7-1 and one against Echo Fox. It's 4-4 and four um, currently. Yep. And now the final... Meet the Jesus Christ. Sucked. Um... Yeah, so actually, <clears throat> I can't really make necessarily make sense of what's going on with the draft. Um, not the draft, but the bands. Uh, because, I mean, if you look at the bands on both sides, hang on, I'll let that, the, the Echo Fox band, the last champion. And if you look at the bands, I mean, as far as Echo Fox side, you pretty much standard bands. Uh, those are very strong first pick champions. I do believe that Alistar on blue side is usually a second rotation pick. Um, which you could take a first rotation on red side if you wanted to. So I don't necessarily get that ban. Um, but I definitely get the, I uh, understand the Lucian got ban. Those are some really good bans, especially when you're talking about Impact, who's really good on, really, on champions are really beefy, you know, that are able to output uh, uh, a limited amount of damage, but, you know, they're especially difficult to deal with just from being especially tanky. Uh, so those are two really good bands, but the, the Alistar band, maybe something else could have could have gone there. Uh, as far as Team Liquid, the Yasuo band, I I get it because 
you know, as, as you see, the, as the band phase goes along, you can pretty much kind of tell where Echo Fox is going with their bands. And you don't really necessarily expect, um, it's, oh, okay, I'm, I'll have to explain this a little bit differently. Team Liquid, as I'll, I'll explain as it's going on, they're kind of going, they're kind of looking to go with a, like a very specific composition. And as you can see, as the bands go through on Echo Fox's end, you could tell that Echo Fox is just basically, they, they're not necessarily banding towards um, what Team Liquid would usually go for, like what sort of composition they would usually go for. Um, those are just like standard, standard red top bands. But in any case, um, the Yasuo band is basically, uh, Yasuo is extremely strong in a uh, landing phase. Uh, obviously late game, he's especially, even, like he's much more stronger. Um, and it's usually picked nowadays in bot lane. So they're looking to avoid that. And as you know, double lift is pretty much like um, the staple carry. So they're looking to protect him in that uh, sort of a scenario. Nocturne is obviously a really strong pick to, I mean, they're basically, if, if you look at their bands, their bands are kind of like tailored towards protecting double lift, so to speak. And you'll even see the, the bands and the picks. You know, it's kind of funny. Uh, the York band, I'm, I'm not necessarily sure what that band was for. Because um, I don't really consider Solo as... I mean, Solo's just, uh, you know... He's gonna get, sometimes he's going to give you what, you what you want or what you need. And sometimes he's just going to kind of play bad. Uh, so I don't necessarily get the York band. But I mean, it's okay. It, it's fine. They, they got the Yasuo and the Nocturne out of there, so, hey. Um, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, so Team Liquid goes to the Ezreal pick first, which is, I mean, it's fine. Especially as we as we know, Team Liquid's um, a big fan of self, self pill ADCs. Uh, and also ADCs that are, that are quite capable of, just ADCs that are quite ca capable of dealing damage. Um, while also being pretty survivable, uh, like ha like having a decent amount of survivability, uh, that that seems to be what they usually like typically go for. Um, and Ezreal's like really strong at the moment, like he's super fucking strong. Um, Echo Fox responds with a Kaisa Brown band or, or Kaisa Brown pick. Sorry, my throat is like super dry. Jesus Christ. And I'm kind of getting sick. But, uh, yeah, these are standard picks. Like, Kaiser Braun, there's nothing outrageous about it. You know, it can be a really strong lane. Um, it's going to do well throughout the entirety of the game. Uh, Kaiser is an ADC that's quite capable of uh, self peel. You know, these are just, it's a standard response. Uh, Kaiser's really strong. Braun's really strong. Um, now, Team Liquid responds with Silas. And yeah, if I'm not mistaken, they don't pick Zillion, they actually pick something else. <laughs> uh, the second pick, if I'm not mistaken, oh yeah, it's gonna be Tom Kinch, I believe. Which is, again, it's just tailored primarily around double lift for the most part. Um, Cause you could even say later on in the game, it's like, uh, excuse me. Sure, Tom Kinch is gonna be really good at um, basically uh, making cross map plays, which is cool, but it's mostly for double lift um, on that Israel, and I don't like the Silas pick at all uh, for a few reasons. You never, you never pick a champion like Silas this early um, into the draft. He's, you, you're always gonna save him last, like in, it is a last pick. Um, because even if you, even if you're selecting a champion like Silas to be like a flex pick, um, to say like, oh, maybe he'll go top, maybe he'll go mid. Maybe at some time in the future he might go jungle. You never know. Um, even if you're even if you're like picking him as a flex pick, it still doesn't work because, as you'll see, what ends up happening is Echo Fox actually picks uh, Jace. Jace isn't a good champion for Silas to take anything from. Um, they're not gonna really end up. Echo Fox isn't gonna really end up picking any champion that is like that has really strong ults uh, for Silas to steal. And that's a problem, you know, when you're picking a champion like Silas. That's a really, really, really big problem. That's a gaping vulnerability. 
um, that exposes Team Liquid's draft. Like, I mean, it's almost as if they're just picking whatever they like. It's almost as if they're, they're actually just, I don't know, throwing in the dark. But the biggest problem that I noticed, because I watched some of this game already, I, I watched about 20, 15 minutes of this video, 20 minutes of this video, and a big problem that you odd like you immediately notice with um, Echo Fox and then picking Jace is Solo's not a Jace player, not even close. Um, you know, he's good for what he's good for. Um, it's no knock against him. Kinda is, yeah, <laughs> kinda is. But, um, I mean, it's just, it, it's, the fact is fact, you know, you kind of have to be honest, uh, about these things, especially if you want to win. He's not a Jace player. He doesn't do very well on this champion from what I've seen. Um, and realistically, he's in a winning matchup, Jace versus Silas, winning matchup, especially, especially he rushes, um, execution is calling. That's a really good pick into Silas, uh, especially because Silas' W is, you know, pretty strong however he doesn't do very well he misses plenty like i don't know skill shots that i could have landed easily myself um and it, i mean i don't know he makes a, he makes an abundance of mistakes uh by being uh, sometimes even over aggressive and you'll just start to see like this is just what you see with this game is just and what you begin to notice is that more than likely what's happening with Team Liquid, even though, is that even though Team Liquid, um, once you start to branch out of you know their, their one dimensional uh, style of play, they they're not very good. But the problem is the other teams, with an exception of maybe a few, aren't very good at capitalizing on them not being being very good in these different um, contexts. And so you have Solo on Jace, who, like I said, he's not very good at the champion. You have Rush on Zach, and I've never taken Rush's like I mean that's similar to when he when he played on uh, Nuno. You know, you have Rush playing a champion that doesn't deal very much damage. That's not that's never gonna be um, a recipe for success. Um, you're definitely gonna want Rush on something that deals uh, that's either no 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 that has two things: mobility and damage. That's where you're going to be most successful with a player like Rush on your team. So that's the second mistake that Echo Fox made, in my personal opinion. Um, Phoenix on on uh, Zoe is fine, you know. I would have probably no. That's fine. That's a fine pick. And like I said, the bottom lane is pretty much. I mean, it's standard. So you're just looking at you're looking at the two top picks, uh, Jace and Zach. You know, they're just, they're not very good picks, in my opinion. And for some reason, they ended up banning out Jarvan, which I would have much more preferred to see Rush on. Uh, even though, I think maybe it was more recently he played JR Jarvan, and he just basically costed his team the game. Um, and they banned out Kindred, which, okay. Uh, you, look over, you look over at Team Liquid. Team Liquid has really good... It, th their compositions are always like this. They're always like this, and it's so good. It's really good. I'm not. I I will say this much. It's really good, except for the top lane pick. I'm. It's. I'm finding it really difficult to understand why they keep doing this to themselves. And like I said, you take a team like Echo Fox, uh, with whatever they're doing, it's quite obvious that they can't take advantage of this exposure of this vulnerability. Uh, because it's really apparent. <clears throat> I mean, you look over at the, the champions on this side. Like Silas doesn't. Silas is useless here. He can't. He's not going to steal anything useful other than maybe Kaisa ult. I mean, what's he going to steal? Zoe ult or Jace ult? I mean, maybe Brom ult. I mean, I don't know. There's just there's not very much usefulness for this champion. Yet they win. Uh, from what I've seen. Okay, so uh, we can go through the game. We'll just see what goes wrong for Echo Fox. I mean, because as I already kind of pointed out, I don't feel like any either of these teams uh, had a very good draft. And I'm, I mean, I'm talking like I like I would just do so much better. Um, and it's really easy to you know see mistakes when you're not on stage and you know you're kind of looking at 
a game after the fact. But it's still these are these are some gaping flaws, man. And this is the second time I've seen Team Liquid draft this way. Um, I can't recall like off. Um, what is it? From my memory, any any thing necessarily about Echo Fox that was like that made me think differently about them. Like I've kind of always had the same perception about Echo Fox. I mean, see something like that, something that forces you to take E early, especially when you you want a faster. Like I don't know. Okay. So I want to kind of skip forward a little bit more and just see, again, like I said, what goes wrong in this game for Echo Fox. I don't know. I feel like I'm talking too much. Jesus. So you see that, like, that, that's going to be something that's going to, that, that's constantly happening solo is not landing very like very important um abilities on impact it's not very good i know it's just that he's not even pressuring like i mean that's that's something i've considered this problematic he's not pressuring like whatsoever and maybe he feels like he can't pressure, but when you're playing a champion like Jace, you don't you know, like Jace, you don't really have a choice. Um, and it's honestly probably not even that difficult. Hmm. Something else that bothers me is that Solo has kleptomancy. I feel like this is a terrible idea. That's so bad. I didn't even notice that before. It's so bad. That is really, really, really bad. Um, why does he not have Aerie? Wow. That's really, really bad. That's not a good look at all. I mean, because the entire purpose of you picking, like, you, you basically, you immediately kind of pick Jace into Silas. And, you know, from the outside looking in, that's under the assumption that you pick Jace to basically dominate him early. You're not you're not going to do that, taking Kleptomancy first and foremost, and secondly, playing like a pussy. Like, he's really, he really is playing like a pussy in lane. Like, I mean, it's kind of, it's bad to say, like, it's bad to just outright say that, but it, I mean, it's fact. This is just one of the reasons why Echo Fox isn't like is not successful in this game. Another reason is um, because of this right here. This is a really good point to, to um, or something to focus on. Usually, if you think about X Smith and you think about Rush, and you talk, you think about pressure. Rush, you typically imagine that Rush is going to be someone who's going to out-pressure Xmithy. And you think of Xmithy as someone who's going to just path really well. It's going to, um... He's basically, he's going to... He's going to play the map better. Whereas Rush is going to basically be more active in the lanes. Whereas you see the opposite happen in this game. And not even the opposite necessarily, you know, Rush plays the map better. It's like, Smithy does both. He plays the map better, and he also out-pressures Rush. And again, I think I just know that that goes back to Rush being on a champion. First of all, that he's not... It's not his bread and butter. He's not really able to apply enough pressure because, I mean, the champion doesn't deal very much damage, and he seems like he's not very comfortable in the champion, too. Uh, yeah, this is something that's going to happen over and over again. Um, Solo's gonna constantly... This isn't really Solo's fault, either. <laughs> it's not really Solo's fault. Um, but he's gonna constantly get pressured throughout this entire game. Um. Yeah. I wonder how much gold he had. I wonder if he could have literally went straight into executioner's calling because if he could if i if if it were me i would go directly into executioner's calling um as soon as possible 
<laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know what Rush is. Okay, I see what he's doing. He's just taking, just taking Grogs. Okay, it's not bad. Wow, Xmithy has so much pressure on the top side of the map. It's actually, it's actually ridiculous. I mean, Xmithy is okay. The problem that you're having here is you look at, and oh, I guess I skipped a kill that Russ got on McSmithy, which I, doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah. Okay, so Phoenix had the kill. It won't really, it's not going to matter. It's not going to matter that much. Um, <clears throat> mid lane is pretty much a stalemate, and no one's necessarily roaming anytime soon, so. So you have so what you have going on is Xmithy has control. He just he basically he has control of the top side of the map. It doesn't make it any better that if Xmithy and Rush ever came in contact, like one v one, Xmithy would one hundred percent win. Um, he's in a champion that does really well, or really well early. He's ahead, and also especially because a champion like um, Zach, who's I mean pretty much primarily based around HP, um, his percent HP damage is going to be especially good versus him um so Russ is gonna basically be looking to avoid x smithy as much as possible um rush should be pressuring the bottom side of the map uh because they look at if you look at it like this they have too much control like team Luka has far too much control over the entirety of the map and they shouldn't you're in a champion like ezreal and Ezra isn't a champion that does well early. I mean, at all. Uh, so, I mean, just the fact that they're doing just so well across the entire map is just, it makes no sense to me. This is why a champion with a lot more damage and a lot more mobility than Zach, and even a lot more clear in the jungle, would have been so much better for Rush here. Um, and it would have actually helped his team out, like, tremendously. I wouldn't have even been opposed to to Trundle, to be honest. If he had taken Trundle instead of uh, instead of Zach, I mean, so yeah, I mean, he's doing what he should be doing. He should be pressuring the bottom side of the map. So yeah, okay. Relieving a little bit of the pressure. Didn't get anything. Didn't blow any summoners, but still, now he's gonna lose his red buff. Hmm. Why? Because Xmithy controls the entire top side of the map. Um, here he goes again for another gank. This is why Echo Fox loses just right here. And I mean if you look if you look at the matchup right now, it's not even like solo's just I mean crushing impact. Impact could probably fight and kill solo. Solo. And that's bad. That's not good. I mean, because it means that if if Xmithy comes, or rather, let's say, when Xmithy comes, you're pretty much dead. There's not very much you're going to be able to do, so. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so top side is a lost cause. Uh, Double lift and core DJ are basically winning bot side. Um, I wish I could see how many plates. Oh, so there's all plates. All five plates are still there. Um, what this is gonna mean is that Xmithy is gonna have control of the Rift Herald. Which, early, like this, whoever has control of Rift Herald is just in complete control of uh, the early to mid game transition. Because like, all you literally have to do is take Rift Herald, set it up on a tower um, with plates on it, automatically get like three or four plates, or take an entire tower out, get all that plate gold. Especially if it's first turret, first turret gold, like that's so much gold uh, that's going over not just the entire team, but uh, especially if someone, whoever drops it. Like for instance, let's say that Smithy gets ripped Herald. He, he goes top and Impact isn't there and he drops it. 
he gets all that gold or majority of that gold solo just straight goes to him it's so much he's gonna put in so much ahead so far ahead um or if you even do this for silas silas is the one that dropped the rift the rift herald it's gonna put it's gonna put him so much ahead um so far ahead of the chase that um the purpose of him even picking that champion isn't gonna matter anymore like you just you look at this this isn't good Rush on this champion owns nothing, has no pressure. Um, and Team Lucas is playing so well together, along with X Smithy, to not only um, get the pressure, but to maintain the pressure. Um, yeah, I don't see how Echo Fox would have actually be able to do anything here especially the later this game goes hmm. Hmm. wow that's so bad is he dead again Smithy as old in like two seconds. He could have actually went for a kill right there. I mean, regardless of flash. Turret plates makes the other game so important, like far more important than any other part of the game. I mean, if you look at, even though double lifts on the champion like Ezreal, it doesn't matter. Also, plates are gone. So, um, that, that wasn't very good. Uh, Smithy didn't abuse the fact that he has complete control over the top side of the map. I mean, his actual complete control over the top side of the map. Okay, so right now, you know where Zach is. You know he has basically no HP. Um, what does that tell you? I should probably, you should take Rift Herald right now. You just seen where he was. Okay, you've seen how much HP he had. You know what's going on in mid lane. You know what's going on top. Impact clearly has priority in this lane. Mid lane's a stalemate. This is when you take this. Yeah. That was a bad call. Let me see if that was probably an opportunity before now to take a Rift Herald. Okay, it hasn't spawned yet. It's spawning soon though. It spawns at 10. What is it? 9 9:30 or 10 minutes? 10 minutes. Okay. So Rift Herald is up. You don't fully have control established yet. Turret plates are going down. Yeah, 14 minutes. Okay. Yeah, so there's basically um, something I know I don't, I've never understood like what teams don't do more often. Uh, so in between that period, so Rift Tail spawns at 10 minutes, plates, uh, turret plates end at 14 minutes, essentially. But there's about a four minute window in there where you basically, if you have enough control established over the top side of the map, why are you not taking Rift Herald? Um, 
Because I'm not exactly sure how long Rift, Rift Herald lasts uh, while it's in your possession. I think it's maybe like two minutes or so. Or maybe a little bit less. But it's so much gold that's just basically left under the table. And this is you don't have to do anything for it. You know, It's not like you have to kill someone to be able to get just free damage on the tower. Or you have to like... You know, pull some some crazy play to... It's like, no, you just... You drop the thing, and it's going to do the rest for you. Um, and it's a lot of gold, and it's practically free. And it's not even being contested. I mean, there's currently no vision at Rift Herald, which is amazing to me. Yeah. It's not like Rush can do anything to stop you if you want to go take it. It's not like um, Rush could do it himself. Uh, without there being some sort of a, a, what is it, a chaos going on around the map. I mean, there's already basically that going on around the, going on around the map. There's not very much you can do about it, but at the very least, there was an opportunity, is all I'm saying. And there's a very legitimate reason for um, a team like prioritizing Rift Herald as like, more important than just damn near anything else. It's very, very, very um, crucial uh, to basically like like gaining a foot like an edge ahead of the enemy like I said especially if you have a situation where you have a top laner who happens to pick up the herald himself take it top drop it get the full gold off of it in such a short amount of time that's basic that's practically potentially maybe half an item if not more so It's a lot of gold. It's a lot of gold. Hmm. So let's see what's going on. Oh, they killed a uh, double lift. Yeah, it wasn't very smart. Yeah, he's playing too far up without a, without a flash. Wait. No. It's not true. Hmm. Well, so maybe that's why he felt so safe into playing that far up, but I don't, still don't think he should play that far up. Considering that all it takes is for Kaisa to land a dope to land a double you on you. Jesus Christ, I'm getting sick. Yeah, so this is pretty much how Echo Fox loses. Rush isn't capable capable of doing anything. He's not capable of applying any pressure, which just basically means that Team Luka gets everything. They have control of both sides of the map. Um, and whenever you have a situation like that, I mean, you can pretty much expect to just roll over and die, lose the game. Yeah, this is not a very smart idea. I mean, because if you look at what's going on, so Xmithy doesn't have smite, so they play like this. They do like this weird dance or something. Xmithy with no smite means that any one's burst could basically take it away. So you could have the potential for uh, JCEQ combo to take it. You could have the potential for uh, Zoe to take it away. Um, despite the fact that Rush is dead. So even though the jungler is dead, doesn't take away the fact that they could seal it because you're all in the same, like a similar situation. It's pretty much RNG. So they back off. Okay. Okay, they've swapped.
Wow. Now he's now he's at a point where he can't even contest him anymore. <laughs> uh, I bet you that has just a lot to do with him not being able to land anything. Let's see. Hmm. Not that it's, it shouldn't be that funny. It shouldn't be that funny, but I mean, it just it kind of is. Okay, so they split up. Uh, they have a lot more control over the bottom side of the jungle now. Interesting. I don't think it's going to matter very much because I'm pretty sure in a 1v, I'm in a 5v5 situation, Team Liquid wins pretty much every time. Zack isn't very useful. Jace isn't too useful. Hmm. You want that even with him missing his ult. Oh god. I mean, the, the next move should probably next move should probably be prioritizing Baron. Uh, place you some vision down, which Team could have, but it looks like it's getting getting cleared. I don't know what they intend to do. Oh, so Team Liquid's not prioritizing. It just kind of show what what leads up to that actually. Oh, okay. I see. Okay, that's good. So, this, I mean, this is what I was talking about earlier. The, the Tom Kinch could potentially do something like that, but I don't think it's going to matter very much, especially considering. Wow. The double lift does what he does all the time. Fixes the fuck up by his team. Not fully, but... Hmm. Oh, nice try. Uh, yeah, so basically, uh, Team Liquid has control of the jungle. I mean, at th at this point, you know, they're just gonna s they're gonna stall them out. They're gonna um, squeeze them out of the jungle, and then they're gonna uh, engage from black map, basically, which is I mean what they've just done. There's pretty much there's not a whole lot that uh, Echo Fox can do about it because of the way that the composition is actually formulated. In the time that they would be able to actually disengage, like Team Liquid should be able to take down someone. And this is another Infernals, right? Two Infernals and two Mountains. And this all has to do, so they can try to rush that. As in, as not even possible, not even close to possible. The most they could probably do is like try to set up a death, bu a death bush. Oh boy, what's going on here? <laughs> the 
it, so it looks like Jace is finally at a point where he's actually doing something versus uh, Silas. Silas' build is actually pretty interesting. Uh, because in my opinion, he should have literally just like went straight tank. Uh, I mean, considering like what he's going, who he's going against, like yeah, no, I guess no, no. His build isn't bad. His build isn't too bad. Uh, it's just, I mean, it's pretty much obvious that Jace is eventually going to win something like that, uh, regardless of how the early game turned out. But I see what he's doing though. Hey, so they're afraid of the. The Zag being able to jump over it and smite the Baron away. Cool. Hang on, what happens here? So Team Lucas is actually shutting down mid. They're saying, screw the Baron. Um, we're going to just go for pushing. Okay, so this is on the bottom side of the map. He's level 18 to level 16, Jace. Wow. That literally has to do with him being in lane more than Jace. It's basically it. Whether it be Jace because he's being low, having to back, or if it's because of um, Jace being dead. Doesn't matter. It's just, that's a one level difference. Or two, it was a two level difference. I mean, that should probably speak for like how the lane, what was going on in the lane, though. Team Liquid has bursted down the uh, Baron. So they have Baron now. So it should be basically, I mean, it's, that's procedural. It should basically shove down the lane now. Yeah, good game. This is interesting. Just, just the dynamic of what's like, what you notice like every time you watch a game, uh, that any of these players play in, um, and especially in these team liquid games, like whether it be in the draft or whether it be in the uh, the game itself, um, or both, you just you notice so much, you know, so 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 much, and it's almost like it's almost I almost wish I was there to you know like point out. <laughs> these flaws like to have a team to be able to draft against them would be so amazing oh my god or to start to be on a team to be able to draft against them it would be so amazing i mean because i feel like i would if the team was willing enough they would be able to beat them uh just through the draft alone um especially when you see something like that like for i mean it's almost as if team liquid is so cocky as to pick york first in the last in the last game that i actually uh analyzed uh the one versus tsm and then pick Silas first. Like, these aren't champions that you pick outright. These are champions that you select in response to something. Or if you select just as a byproduct of, you know, however the the, the, um, the champion select unraveled. You know, this, that isn't a good thing. It isn't a good thing that this isn't being punished because come the time they go for, to Worlds, you're going to see this be exposed no matter what. This is a flaw. This is a problem, and I guess they're look they're trying to fix that through doing this. But it it won't matter if you don't necessarily know just how bad it actually is. Um, if someone's not, I mean, yeah, if someone's not able to identify that, hey guys, regardless of the, you know, like despite the fact that you're winning, you know, you're not looking too hot, and we definitely need to work on our draft. Um, I know these situations, you have players who will probably say something like, oh, give me this, I know this works here, this works in this matchup. Uh, just, you know, they're, they're pretty adamant, they're pretty uh, strong-willed or strong-headed and stubborn as to what they want to play and how they want to play it. But it doesn't matter. It really, really, really doesn't matter. Um, in any case, um, this this was an interesting game. To watch and I'm so confused as to how Team Liquid won. Oh, I'm not confused. I'm saying that just I don't know in reference 
to the draft, but uh, that'll pretty much be it for me. Uh, I think I'm just going to go take a nap or something. <laughs> go eat something, and I'm a little thirsty. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Please do leave a like or something or another, however that works. Um, eventually, I will add my social media to the description. Um, you know, when if you get a chance, check me out on there. I don't, I'm not really a Twitter person or anything like that. So I'm not really a social media person, but eventually I'll do it just because I'm, you know, I probably should. And I'd really appreciate it. Um, and hey, let let a team know if they're looking for a have decent coach or even an analyst. You know, I'm definitely interested uh, because. I would definitely, I really want the North American team to be better, and I feel like I would be um, a massive contribution um, to to that being more successful, and I'm willing to show it, and because I see it, I see it as a possibility, and that possibility I see through a team like Cloud Nine. Cloud Nine is a, a team that gives me a little bit of hope, but at the same time they have their flaws just like anyone else. So uh, we'll see. Thanks for watching again, and peace out.